In this video, we're going to use Altair's cassette interface in order to load BASIC and get it up and running on an Altair 8800 computer. Now this is a video I did about six months ago, but at that point I didn't actually have the cassette interface. Instead, I used a PC to send an image of 8K BASIC through the very same serial port the cassette interface would have used, but I didn't have the actual cassette interface. Now the Altair didn't know the difference, but I did, so now I want to remake this video with the real cassette interface. Now the original video is still worth watching, it has some additional information in it, but in this one we'll get to see it work with the real interface. Alright, so let's go ahead and fire up this computer, give it a hard reset, and as always we've got an empty machine with nothing but uninitialized RAM, so we're going to have to put in a bootstrap loader through the front panel switches in order to give it enough smarts to begin reading data from the cassette interface, which is coming in through a serial port. What it's going to read at the start of pretty much any Altair tape is another more sophisticated loader called the checksum loader. That loader is then given control and it turns around and reads the rest of BASIC. Alright, the checksum, excuse me, the bootstrap loader, the code for that is given to us by Altair in the manual that would have come with BASIC. That check bootsum loader is specific to the version of BASIC you're running and to the serial port that you're using to load BASIC. So in this case we're loading 8K BASIC version 4 and we're loading it through the cassette interface serial port. So I've got the code for that here in front of me and it's straight out of the Altair manual. So we're going to go ahead and put that in. Bootstrap loaders loaded address 0 which we have here on the lights. First byte is a 41. So we'll deposit that into location 0. Second byte is 302. We can now use deposit next to increment to address 1 and put the 302 in. Okay, the next two bytes are 37 and 61. Deposit next puts in the 37, 61, 22 and 0, 333 and 6, 17 and 330, Three thirty three and seven, two seventy five, three ten, fifty five, one sixty seven, three hundred, three fifty one. So that's the bootstrap loader. At this point, if we're using paper tape, we would take the paper tape and position it in the middle of the leader bytes that start before 8K BASIC. Unfortunately, on a cassette, that's not so easy to do because even if you position the tape in the leader data, there's no guarantee that you're going to start on a byte boundary. So this causes difficulty in getting a cassette to load properly every single time. So in order to get around this, Altair introduced a little bit of extra code called a leader detector that actually you can put in through the front panel and run it before the bootstrap loader even gets control. So what this code does is it scans looking for the leader. As soon as it sees the leader come in the serial port, then it jumps to the bootstrap loader, which wants to start off reading the leader byte. All right, so this is put up a little bit higher, up in the upper 250, um, 256 byte here. So we set that to 1. We'll examine that location. So now the lower byte of the address is 0, the upper byte is 1. And let's put in this code. It's 333 and 7. So we'll deposit that right there at that location. 333 and 7 with a deposit next. 376, 302. So 376, 302. 302 and 0, 1 and 303, and 0 and 0. Alright, so this code we put in is what we're going to actually execute, and it's going to look for leader. Once it sees the leader byte come in, then it'll jump to the bootstrap loader. So let's examine the start of the ad of where we put this in. There's our 333. Upper address byte has a 1 in it, lower address byte is a 0. Now we need to set these switches to tell BASIC the type of serial port to expect when it gets running. 
the 2SIO port with one stop bit, so these four bits are set to a value of one. These four bits tell the loader what type of serial port is being used to load BASIC. It's a cassette interface serial port. That is a value of three, zero, zero, one, one. All right, now we're ready to run. But before we do that, let's position the tape. You see I've got the headphone plug unplugged so I can listen to the tape. And I'm gonna listen for idle tone just to let me know that I'm pretty close to the start of where all this begins. Idle tone is just a mark or a one before data begins. All right, there it is. I'm going to pause the tape. Excuse my head. I'm going to plug the cable into the headphone jack. I'm going to go ahead and set the volume to about middle. All right, I'm going to release pause to let the tape go, and then hit run. What we see here is the leader detection code running. Pretty soon we'll see this disappear once it's got the leader byte there. Now it's in the bootstrap loader. At this point, it's reading past the leader bytes. It's loading the bootstrap loader, or excuse me, the checksum loader at the start of the tape. And then we'll see it jump. There you go. Now the checksum loader is running. At this point, it is reading in the rest of the tape, which contains basic. Now this is a fairly long process. Takes about another four, four and a half minutes. So while this process continues, we're going to go ahead and do a video cut. And we'll come back in right before it finishes loading. All right, well that change in lights tells us that the tape is finished loading. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. And that BASIC is now taken over control. And if we move over here to our uh, console, now I don't think you can necessarily read this. Uh, the idea here was to use a period piece. Let's see if I can get a little bit less glare. I don't know that I can. Now this is a Hazeltine terminal straight out of the day. That says memory size. I'll go ahead and hit return there. Now it's asking for terminal width. Wanting sine, cosine, I'll just say yes. Oh, it wants capitals. All right, now BASIC is up and running. And again, I don't know that you can read any of that, but it gives you the idea. I'm gonna say print two plus two, and it says four. All right, at this point, you could actually use the cassette to load a program. I'm just going to see if I can somehow make that readable. Just doesn't look like it's going to happen. For example, I could say C load and give it the name, which is one character, of a file on my tape. I have the primes program on this tape up here at, um, I don't even remember, let's see, 185 or so on the, on the tape counter. Let me go up there. And I'm going to listen for leader tone to see if I'm in the right spot or not. Still not an extremely quick process, is it? All right, should be. All right, there's the start of it. So I'll pause it, plug the cable into the headphone jack, set the volume, and hit play. Now you can load the Primes program. Now, believe it or not, this was way quicker than paper tape because it was at 300 baud instead of 110. Plus, it used an internal format. See, it's done already. I'll hit stop. I'll hit list. It's a very short program. And what this does is compute primes. You've seen it in some of my other videos. But at 300 baud, it's about three times faster than paper tape. And it loaded and saved programs in internal format as opposed to straight ASCII. So that made it a bit quicker as well. All right, so there we've done it. We've booted from cassette. We've loaded a program from cassette, and that demonstrates how it all works. That's it for this video. Now, the computer used in today's video is actually an Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer accurately duplicates the look and the feel, features and performance of a real Altair, but it does it with modern hardware on the inside. That way you don't have to worry about damaging a collector's quality or museum quality computer while you play and run these various exercises that just are, are so interesting and so fun to recreate this part in history. Be sure to visit the folks at AltairClone.com to learn more about this great computer.